Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we're gonna pot up some furs. I've had the wonderful opportunity to work with uh, Mr. Kruger of Kruger Tree Farms and uh, Neil has been super nice with uh, donating a little bit of acreage for me, just a small amount, a little plot of land, where I've been able to put a few, a couple dozen trees in the ground and we've put in some uh, red pines and white pines and some Fraser firs, we've put in some um, Canaan firs. Um, and he also has uh, given me some access to some other trees that he gets for his Christmas tree farm. So I've been doing some experimentation and seeing what kind of uh, furs and uh, these pines can uh, do to uh, possibly get a bonsai going, right? So in the white container, we have uh, your very common Christmas tree. It's a Fraser fir. And then over on the right here, we have a Korean fir. Now there's a Korean pine and a Korean fir. Uh, and one of the striking differences about the Korean fir is that if you look at the underside of the Korean fir, um, you, you lose that greenish bluish color that you see in the pine and on the bottom it's a little bit more of a uh, chalky, pasty, white, grayish substance on the bottom. It's not fungus, that's actually the color of the underside of the pine. And so if you ever do some twisting and moving up branches, if you were to twist it too far around, you'd lose some photosynthesis capacities if you uh, showed the more dull, chalky side than the darker green and bluish side. So that's the fur. We're gonna do the fur second today. Uh, first, we're gonna start off with the um, Fraser. Very common in Minnesota. If you're gonna get a Christmas tree, you go to a tree farm. We've been doing it for about 25 years in my family, and we go chop one down. And one of the places we went this year was a place that my son has been working at for the last five years or so, and that's uh, the Kruger Tree Farm. And that's where I've been able to uh, do some experimentation. And again, I've got a couple of dozen trees in the ground and we're gonna put some more in this year and we're uh, doing some experimenting. And I just love the movement of this tree early on. I put a little bit of wire on last year and I had a couple of branches that were just kind of starting to show movement already. This guy right here just has natural movement up from the uh, trunk and then out this way. And uh, we did have a little bit of wire on this last year. I gotta take off the wire in the trunk. After we get it in the pot, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna see uh, what's going on with uh, the uh, root system of this uh, tree. I've had it in this pot all last year. And uh, so we're gonna rip it apart and see what's going on inside. Now the other part of today's show is going to be uh, the start of a couple of update shows. So while I'm doing some work to get all this going, you guys don't have to watch me doing all this forever and ever. So while I'm starting on this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a couple of updates for you. So you take a look at an update or two, and then when you come back, we'll see how far we've gotten with this uh, Fraser fir and what kind of root system we have. So we'll get started here and we'll see you just in a little bit. It's gonna grip to that rock, make it nice and tight. There is the barberry, tree number one for today. My first update is going to be on the barberry bushes. I repotted a whole bunch of barberry bushes very early in the season. Put them back in the cold frame to uh, keep them in there until it was warm enough to bring outside. So if you look closely enough on this branch, these branches now, we've got some new, kind of that burgundy colored leaves that are growing in this uh, barberry. So this is one of the uh, trees. And we've got some growth in there. Looking real uh, promising that this one's gonna do some really cool things this year. So I'm looking forward to that one. I didn't get this one into a pot this year. That'll probably be next year really tall maybe thinking this is going to be maybe a literati style barberry bush because look at how tall that one trunk is and as i was looking at it today 
we're gonna look at it right there there's some new growth all that little green in there so the other barberry has a little bit lighter green colored leaves but they're there they're starting to sprout up you can see little itty bitty ones and this one is my second favorite of the of the four or so that I planted showing some signs of life so again super super subtle changes subtle updates and then real quickly I did the nine bark a little while back this one always looks super dead until it starts getting that new growth like a lot of the trees do and you panic you get worried we've got some new leaf starting to grow I like that they're growing low on the branches got a couple low ones there and when this thing leaves out it has some great amber colored leaves some green some amber uh, just really really fun so the nine bark is alive and well another little downpour here we had 85 degrees just on Monday mid to upper 70s on Tuesday 60s again today so it has been spring almost summer like here April showers hoping to bring some uh, May flowers and definitely the buds on the trees opening up let's check up on those pines see how we're doing okay we're back you might hear all the commotion around um, we got thunder with the rain and we have the alarms going off but the alarms aren't going off because we have a tornado in the area I don't think I think it's because it's one o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday and the first Wednesday of the month the sirens go off and they do that for the first time in April here in Minnesota and so we know that our sirens are working so that was a test at one o'clock not that there's a tornado coming but I'll have to keep an eye to the sky just in case as we continue to work on the Fraser fir so I got a really good uh, chunk of soil off of there. I'm not going to bare root it completely. Got a lot of roots, but this is a very interesting tree in that, um, oh, and incidentally, I'm going to put it in this pot. Um, we're going to cut some roots down, make that fit. Should look really, really nice. My square one was just a little bit too small. Rectangle, I should say. So we're going to cut some roots off and take a peek at this, but this has a really interesting trunk. And it, it swoops this way, and it partially swoops this way because the roots on this side look straight down and non-existent. And then there's a couple of roots that grew on this side and a couple of roots that grew on this side, and the back is all bumpy and gnarly, unless that becomes the front. Um, I don't like it as the front. That is the front, because we got this in our face, right? We can always move branches. Um, this could be possibly a front. We got this back here for uh, texture. This could maybe move on over here. And so we have a decent front, but if I just go ahead and twist it just a little bit more, then you can see this branch right here, this branch here. We got some, and we got the, the um, roots growing on this side, some roots growing on this side, and you can kind of see this swoop here of the trunk that kind of swoops up. And I kind of tried to accentuate that curve a little bit, then bring it back this way last year. So. We have a couple of options there with what the front can be. And then you'll see this kind of indent here. We could put a big rock in front of this. I know I've been a little rock happy this spring, but there's a perfect indentation there for this to be wrapped around rocks of some sort. And look at these two roots right here. They literally right now are trying to grow this way right now. They could be wrapped around a rock, like this thing's growing around a rock. Now the rock would be in front, and so I don't know, we'd lose the trunk and it wouldn't be as, uh, as effective because we like to see that nabari of a tree typically. However, some really great plantings are of a tree that's totally coming out of a rock and the rock is the base of where it uh, connects with the soil and the pot. But I also can take this root and bring it this way and work on the nabari, nabari this way. This one I can bring this way, straight down. And then we can hopefully get something over here. This is a little bit of a swell right here. Like there might be some roots down there. We'll find that out probably in the next repot but for right now. We're going to trim some of these roots. I'm going to stand to make this easier for me. I'm going to cut down the roots. And get rid of some of this uh, long, leggy root growth here. Cut it down in the middle, of course. 
any remaining semi-tap root type of roots we're going to get rid of. And we'll be ready to go. I'm really excited to get this into a pot because pines typically don't like to stand in water. And when it's in a nursery pot, I get nervous that I'm overwatering these guys. This thing is pretty moist right now because we had a lot of rain last night. I'm surprised it's not muckier than it is today, to be all honest. I expected this to be way more mucky. We did get a fair amount of rain. So I'm going to tease out the bottom just a little bit more here. So this will sit down in the pot as low as I want it to. I'm not going to completely bare root this this year for any by any stretch but I need to get a little bit lower here on this main underneath side there we go cut a few more of these roots down lower here and there we go and we got some other roots that are kind of bending down they grow out and then they grow straight down. As an example, right here, it goes out and then it goes straight down. That's a 90 degree root angle. This one did the same thing. So we don't want those 90 degree angles. So we're gonna cut those off and encourage them to grow more out instead of down now as we uh, spread this out in our new pot. All right, let's take a peek at the pot and see if we're close to ready. Yeah, that's certainly enough roots off of there. We got enough space in there for sure. So we're just gonna have to get some wire in here. We're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna secure this tree with all these weird roots on the left side and the right side, no matter which way you look at it here, left and right. Um, and again, the front, it's gonna be a little twisted, a little twisted so it's not straight head on with this roots giving you a big old hug, but a little bit more this way so we can kind of see this branch. This one comes back over here. We can wire this later on as well. So we're going to put it a little off of center here in the back left corner. Twist it just a little bit and then we'll see what we can do with these roots laying them down and hope that they spread out for some future ramification. Um, this back nubby side back here, we'll hope that some roots can kind of form back here. And so it's not just so chopped off right here. You can see right here it bends down and chops right off here. A rock could even go here as well. So there's that little chop down. You put a rock right here, hug it in there, and this could be growing out from a rock. So I still might experiment with that because I do love the roots over rocks and exposure. I like all that. So let's, we'll see what we got. Let's get some wire in here and uh, we'll get this set up. Hey, while I'm doing that, let's take another update for you. Now this is the Cotone Asters. So I repotted the Cotone Asters a good month ago, the first one. I did six in all, showed a couple of them on some episodes. Right now, here's some update images on the Cotone Asters and how they've done uh, in the cold frame, slowly coming out of the cold frame, and now uh, the first, uh, second week of uh, April, take a peek at what they're looking at. Here are the Cotone Asters. Hi, Milo. Look at that. What, what was that doing in the pot? Get that in place, and I'm going to try to feed this front wire through this root. And though you won't be able to see it perhaps very well, it did go through. There it is, right there. It's going to come to this guy right here. And we're going to, by hand, give it a couple of cranks. I'm going to clean out this bulge a little bit here. So now there, this branch now has these two as this is like the new leader right now, if I shorten this even more. This back branch now that I see it, if I just go ahead. I've got a thicker, coarser branch here. I got, I got these two jetting straight at you, both of them, but this one competes with this one, so now I have this, this, and that. Let's just stop there. We've got it watered. We cut up a fair amount of this tree. 
we cut off a fair amount of the roots. I think the roots will support the foliage. The foliage, which is going a little early, I wish it would wait another couple of weeks, but it's growing. But we're gonna go back and put it in the cold frame so it doesn't get direct sun all day long and go from that real hot afternoon to the real cold nights. So we'll keep it at that 40 degree range in the cold frame and we'll, uh, we'll see where it goes. Those Catoni Asters I'm super excited about. Got a really, really good deal last year. Kept them in their pots, uh, repotted six of the seven. Uh, I'm looking to do one more. Um, I'm gonna do that with my stepson. He wants to kinda take a peek at this bonsai world and he wants to do a uh, tree. But uh, football, flag football and baseball has taken over his mind. So we might not get to it for a little while, but we gotta get to it soon because it's fully leafed out. Uh, and I'm, I feel like I'm almost losing my time here. But it's still April, they're still young, there's a lot of growth left to it, we're gonna be probably fine. So the Catoni Aster's doing really, really well. All of them have growth on them, some a little bit more than others. A couple were in my cabin cold frame, exposed to a little bit more natural sun that came through windows, so indirect light. And then the other couple uh, that have a little bit less growth were in the uh, garage cold frame here, no light whatsoever. So there's a case study right there. I had trees out in the cabin cold frame, trees here, those were glorious. These are okay, just catching up a little bit more growth, earlier growth, and if you can maintain it and uh, uh, get some light in your cold frame, I think that's a good uh, case study for a positive effect with having some lights. So I might start adding some lights to my cabin cold frame. I'm gonna remodel it this year, and then I'm gonna add some lights, I think, so I can put some lights at least starting in the spring, come January, give it some light, maybe even in December, um, um, or maybe the whole time, just a little bit of light, because Trees outside right now in Minnesota in the middle of winter, even though we don't get a lot of sunshine and not much daylight hours, there's still light, there's still sun. Back through the root structure. And we'll connect it to this first side. We're gonna spread roots around so we have nice room to grow in a protected way. Get these two wires secured. Now we have a tree with a really cool exposed root system from the front, back, or sides. Nothing directly facing right at us. We'll make sure these roots kind of flare out here a little bit. Time to get some soil in there. So with this root structure having two very sharp kind of drop off edges, this is where it's super important for us to go ahead and make sure we're tamping down this soil. Reaching in there with our chopstick to make sure that that soil gets down in there, underneath those roots that split a little bit from the left side and from the right side. So don't skip this step. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of soil to go down, especially on that side right there. And right here underneath this, because right under here, this right here, 
this trunk goes down and then in goes in. So we have to make sure that there's soil in there. Sitting down real nice and tight right below that tree. And then we can push more soil over there and pack it in. Yeah, we got a lot of soil going down in there. I'm not gonna do any trimming on this tree um, after this repot. We cut back some roots. We have plenty of foliage, I believe, to support the growth this spring. We're just gonna let it grow, do its thing. I got a lot of viable buds that are showing up that I can see they're ready to, to start doing some swelling here soon. And so I'm just gonna leave it there. I might take the uh, wire off at some point. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, that's the structural wire for the trunk. Everything else has been taken off. And uh, we're just gonna put some sphagnum moss on here and call it a day for this first Fraser fir. I'm coming to the bottom of my five gallon bucket of sphagnum moss. Uh, stuff that I uh, purchased from the store in combination with the sphagnum moss from the collection of the tamarack trees last year. So if I go up uh, tamarack hunting this year, which I certainly hope so, what I'm going to do for sure is to make sure I grab myself a lot of sphagnum moss so I can make sure that I can have a lot of sphagnum moss for uh, next year's uh, repotting. Because I used at least five gallon pail this year, I'll probably use uh, ten gallons next year. I just watered the tree. It's raining outside, so it's going to get some more rain too. But I wanted to bring you in close just to show you the buds on this guy. That's making me feel pretty good. So I've got three uh, buds sitting right there that are starting to swell. There's a little bud back right here. There's two nice buds right here and there. There's two buds. You come up the tree, there's a bud there, there's a bud there. There's a bud there, there's a bud there, and there, and there, and there. This, this uh, leader is doing really well. A couple buds there. Um, not as many on this branch right here. I don't see any on the first glance. But there is the one on this one, and there's about one, two, three, four, five, six on this branch. And uh, even this lower branch down here, there's a nice bud back here and three at the tip. So the tree has buds, it's ready to shoot. And uh, that is super exciting. So here's the tree from the front. The best angle in the future is probably to be a little bit more like that, but I've got this, this is the root flare coming right out at the viewer, but it does show the best shape of the tree. So maybe we'll have to sacrifice the, uh, the roots for a better Navari, better trunk, and you see this better uh, placement of the branches. But for right now, it's head on right like that. We can bring this branch down here. We could bring these down and around like this a little bit. We've got some uh, left, right movement. This guy over here can be moved a little bit. Um, so we'll worry about that later. But there is uh, the Fraser fir from Kruger Tree Farm. Super excited to see what uh, the trees in the field are doing this year. They've been in the ground for a year. We're going to put new ones in this year in a couple more weeks here. We're going to put in some more trees. I'll make sure to film that and uh, we'll see where this guy goes. The Fraser fir. Next up is the Korean fir. So again, the difference between a Korean fir versus the Korean pine tree, one of the main differences is the underside of the branches, how they have that kind of pasty, whitey, grayish kind of look. Uh, on the bottom layer. So when you're twisting and turning your branches, you have to be careful of that. I've got one that I, I had two of these last spring in the pots. I put one in a uh, bonsai pot right away and let the other one grow in the pot and did a little pruning last year. So this one's looking a little bit thin, um, but it grew all, the, all last year and, get, and got some uh, buds ready for this year. And so there are buds on all the tips and it looks like it's ready to go. But let's go take a peek at the other one that I put in a pot last year and I'll show you the uh, pasty white gray color before we start working on this one. So here we have the Korean fir. So this one was put into a pot last year. Again, a real gnarly trunk. Gotta work on that root system next time I repot this to see if we can spread some of those roots out. But it got that nice little curve right off of the nabari there. See that better when I go low? Nice little wide base, and it kind of curves up to the right a little bit there. And I put a little wire on there last year, and we curved it to the left a little bit. So a little subtle movement so far. And then I chopped off the branch right here to make this the new leader. But now look up top, if you can see the different coloration here, look at back here. Do you see that coloration right there? That's that underside gray look right there and there. Because I twisted this around a little bit, uh, the underside was exposed a little bit. So I have to be careful where I put that one. This guy too right here got twisted a little bit so the underside is up top. So I'm gonna have to be careful when I go and try to lay these branches down to make sure that the uh, green or bluish green, green side is gonna be on the top. 
there you can see a little bit of that chalky color look to it. And so we're gonna have to make sure we position those correctly this year here before we get too deep into the summer. But there is a Korean fir already in the pot. We're gonna give this one a brother or sister. As I begin to dig into the root structure of this uh, nursery Korean fir from Kruger Tree Farms, I am going to uh, send you on another quick little video update. So the big update will be in a couple of weeks where the color is going to be phenomenal. But I went ahead and took some pictures earlier today with this nice uh, neutral density light. You know, the overclass guys give you some really good light on your trees. And I did an update picture of all my tamaracks, my uh, larches from, from the harvest from last year. So I originally started with nine trees and uh, two passed away last year and did not make it past the summer. But seven of them went through the winter, went through right in my garden area, and we have greenery ready to poke on through. So here's a couple of pictures of the tamarack trees and what they look like right now, the first week of April. And uh, take a peek at those. The big update will be in a couple weeks when those really start to push out. But this is so fun to see. I love this time of year when you get to see all this new growth and it wants to grow so bad. Take a peek at these. Such an amazing time of year. I absolutely love spring. My dad, my brothers have often always said that they just love fall, their favorite time of year. It's a close second for me. I love fall, I love the changing of the colors. It's why I have such a variety of trees in my collection. I like the yellows, I like the oranges, I like the reds, I like the golden color of the larch, the tamarack, when it turns its colors and drops all its, I just love all that in the fall, absolutely spectacular. But I don't know if anything gets me more excited day to day, ready to jump out of bed and start doing some more work, than checking your trees every single day. I check my trees every day, almost 365 days of the year, because I've got some indoor plants in my plant room, I've got the ones outside in the cold frames, and then when this time of year pops, Oh my gosh, it is the most exciting thing for me to go out there and just see the new growth. So those, those larches, those tamarack you just saw, they are in the beginning stages of glory for the year and I hope they continue to do well. Now they're still in 100% pumice and the sphagnum moss that they came in, I'm not gonna repot them this spring. That'll be next year. Two full years of taking care of them um, and uh, making sure that they are doing well before I put them in a pot. When you get them out of the bogs in northern Minnesota, a lot of times the roots can be all different levels and very thin up on top and nothing down below. You cut it too high, you might get just scraggly little roots. Um, I did the best I could to go as deep as I could and preserve the roots and then just put them in those nursery pots. And uh, I've got green on seven of the nine original trees. Only seven of them made it to the winter. And now all seven made it through the winter and we'll see if we can get them through another growing season. So time to trim this guy up now. We got to the bottom of the root structure here. We've got a real tall, narrow set of roots on this one. So I'm not sure what pot I'm gonna use. More roots going straight down again, that 90 degree angle all of a sudden. Um, I don't have another oval the same size as the last tree that I just put in a pot which was the Fraser fir, your common Christmas tree. I really like how that one turned out and how it's looking. It's gonna be fun to see that one mature in the next couple of years. So I'll have to take a couple of uh, pots here and take a peek. And this one, when I pulled it away from 
the nursery basket and got this shape here, the nursery soil was up to here. Now I dug a little bit with my uh, finger or whatever at the nursery and I knew it was getting a little bit wider down below, but look, there's a big bulge down here. So, I mean, this is really a big old thick nabari down here. So I'm not sure what created that kind of a bulge, but uh, I have heard how common it is for some trees in nursery, the pines in the nursery uh, uh, containers. If they're, I don't know if it's because they're too deep in the soil, um, but you get a lot of times these roots that grow real close to the, to the base and they grow straight down. They kind of girdle or suffocate the tree and they can kind of make it all uh, go away. But look at how thick this section is right here, a good two inches of real thick girth and then all the roots start. And we've got these roots trailing down here. This one right here just sticks up, you know, cut that off. There's a couple here that are that are hugging the tree and they've just, I think, uh, meshed right to the tree. So those are, those are roots that are, they've kind of become one with the tree. But now here's a new root right here. Maybe that could thicken up over time. These guys right here could thicken up over time and make this more of a, a flare that goes outward. This one is attached to the tree to about here, and then it flares out, comes out way out here. But this would be almost like where the root line would be with this kind of nabari sticking out right here. So this is gonna be under soil for this potting, and I'm not bare rooting, so the next time I'll get rid of some more soil underneath here. But there's a lot of thick trunk right here. That's gonna be an interesting. So because of that, I thought, well, I could fit it into a square pot, or I mean a rectangle pot that I couldn't fit the other one in. And it's a little tight here. Look at how high it sits. It's not deep enough. Um, even though this goes down to here, I could put soil to there and be okay. And these roots would start to form, but that might look kind of odd. So I don't know if that one's big enough. This one, I, don't, I think it is a little wider. It's a tad, it's a tad roomier. But I'm going to have to go the next size up for the rectangle if I want it to be in a rectangle. I do have a square pot, but I said, nah, this is probably never going to work. But if we cut out some roots and we put this in here, not a lot of roots, not a lot of room for roots to grow. And I don't know if I like that square ceramic pot with the pine anyway. I'm not sure. But I think it's a, it's a size too small. So those aren't going to work. So I have to go back to the drawing board and see if I have some bigger pots. I either have a couple of huge pots or they're too small. And in my collection of just massive other kind of pots, I do have this plastic training pot, white of all colors. I don't have a white pot in my collection. I will now, we'll put this, uh, although this came from a white pot or the, uh, the other fur did, but we're going to cut off a little bit of this bottom root structure here so it sits a little bit lower. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and put it in this white pot. It's all I have. I don't have another order of pots coming in in the next couple of days. And I started this today. We're going to finish it today. So this is a pretty thick tree that's not going to bend. So we're going to just do an, a formal upright. Well. I don't think it's straight enough for a formal upright. Maybe we have to tweak, tweak, tweak it just a little bit. So the, my vision right here is because this branch moves nice over here, and this one comes nice over here, that I'd probably put it at an angle just like about here. And this, of course, is moving up here. I did cut a branch off here, so one of these three will become the leader. But we're going to go ahead and do that. So we got four drain holes in there. We're going to put some wire in there, and we'll get this thing going. To get this thing all smashed in there it's a round pot so the front could be anywhere I want it to be all right so I'm gonna reach this I'm gonna go underneath some roots here. Try to get it to back here. For connection point number one. Let's 
pretty sturdy already. You can spin this thing around forever and find a front that'll be pretty decent. All right, let's get this other wire in here. When I first saw this, I thought it was a colander. A lot of people go into the colanders for their deciduous trees. But lo and behold, it was just a plastic training pot. It just happens to be white. Don't know where I got this one from. Probably from my buddy Mark when I got some of his stuff. I just paid tribute to my friend Mark with my uh, repotting of his old Tamarack. Go take a check at that. I'll have a link in the description. And make sure you look for that uh, pair of robins that fly by my head. Pretty spectacular little piece of video that I got so lucky to capture just because I happened to be filming a bonsai tree makeover. Miss my buddy Mark. Think about him every time I work on bonsai. So, an unassuming pot. This is just to get the tree in a pot growing for a couple of years, training it a little bit. We got some weird roots sticking up there. There's one right here. There's one right there. There's a couple back here. And so these are just going to be with some sphagnum moss here. And we're just going to see how this thing grows over the course of this year as we prepare in a couple of years to maybe get it into a, a much nicer pot. See what uh, direction it's going to take. So we'll go give this some water and uh, we'll put this one up to... Uh, the one we just potted. Definitely soggy out here. The rain continues, a little break in the action. I can film outside for a brief moment. Here is the one I put into a pot last year. And again, this is the Korean fir. And I just did this three pot on the Korean fir. So you can see this uh, has some root structure that's kind of up and gnarly and all over the place. And now this one too, you got this one right there. You got this one right here covered in some sphagnum moss. There's one hidden underneath there. Uh, and so, yeah, these are some very, very interesting uh, trunks at the base of these from that nursery. And then this is the um, Fraser fir that we did uh, first today. So you have the three trees all next to each other. Uh, looking lovely. That white pot sure shows the dirt though, doesn't it? Well, this was fantastic. Caught up, got a couple more repotted. We still have some to go. Uh, the uh, April Madness, as we've moved into April, continues. We've got uh, at least three or four more to do, including uh, the next forest with a couple of pines, a couple of uh, uh, poplar trees, and a couple of maples. Going to make another Minnesota forest here coming up very, very soon. That does it for another show, though. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you uh, like what you saw. Got questions, comments, concerns, send them my way, of course. I do appreciate that. And uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Well, this was great. Let's go do some more work. All right. I'm Dave Weiss for Dave's Bonsai. Take care of you. Take care of your bonsai. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.